Cool. Okay. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Tao. Welcome to CCP Masterclass. If it's um, comfortable to you, please turn on the camera and you can turn your mic freely to talk anytime. Just raise your hand before you're doing so. Hi, Ellen. Dark, can you Hi. let the people in? Sorry. Hi, Ellen. Yeah. Hello. <clears throat> Thank you for joining, Ellen. We'll start the talk show right in a few minutes. We're just waiting for people to join in. Oh, hi, Ellen. <laughs> how did hi, you? El, are you? How did you find find out about us? Uh, it's from Eventbrite. Oh, cool. Where Where do you um Where are you from? Where are you right now? <laughs> I'm in I'm in Cambridge. Oh, oh wow, Cambridge. Wow. Oh, cool. Well, really nice to really nice to meet you, um, and really nice to meet all the other participants as well. Tao, uh, sorry if I'm mis messing up your pronunciation. Uh, Nguyen, Nguyen as well. Yeah, she's my sister. Um, in Vietnamese, oh. it's easier. I don't know if she has any English name. Will you right, let's sis, make one you, right now? <clears throat> yes, yeah, sis. Can you change your name to an English name? <clears throat> oh, wow. Oh, okay. So everyone, we're going to go live on on Facebook uh, very soon. And that will be the formal start of the TCB masterclass number nine. Um, is, is everyone ready, Dart, Nikki? Yep, right. ready. Just a moment, I'm sharing the live stream. <clears throat> cool, I, we haven't gone live yet. So oh, let's go live. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna count let's down. start after we share the live. Okay, cool, cool. I think it shows that it's live right now. Is it live? Okay. I believe we're live. Yes, I'm, yes. I'm seeing the live right now and sharing it just a minute. Cool, cool. Okay. okay so people can watch us talking and do stuff. Cool. How is everyone's day so far? Diep, Ellen, <coughs> Tao, or Nai? If you guys cannot speak, you can put in the chat box. Yeah, how was your day? How are you? Yeah. It's a very close and friendly masterclass, guys. So we're all welcome to talk to each other, unmute, show our faces as well. <laughs> cool. What time is it in Cambridge, by the way, Ellen? Uh, it's uh, three o'clock now in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Because it's, it's like dark here. I think it's, what time is it in Australia? I think it's uh, past midnight, is it? In Australia. Yeah, it's just past midnight now. Wow. wow. All right. Okay, I reckon we can start now. I'm going to put the live link. So the Facebook live link is in Zoom now. And uh, if anyone you guys think would be interested to watch, feel free to share. Um, they will literally be watching as we are talking. Um, I guess I don't need to explain that. That's what live is. <laughs> uh, but Dad, I'll pass it over to you. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Gary. I just finished the last step to sharing on the group chat, uh, uh, sorry, the group, Facebook group. Yeah, I think we're ready now. So once again, thank you everybody in the Zoom meeting and everybody's watching through live stream. And uh, welcome to Master Class Live in Singapore. And let's um, have a bit of applause for our guest speakers today, Nikki Sujari. Yay. <clears throat> so thank you, Nikki, for joining us today. It's uh, my pleasure and everyone's pleasure to have you here to share about life in Singapore about yourself and yeah your stories and we can thanks wait for having me also. yeah 
<laughs> yeah, Nikki. So first of all, can <clears throat> can we hear a bit of your introduction about yourself, your um cultural background, your mm. hobbies, your professional yeah. life? All right. Yep. Yep. Sure. Sure. So yeah. Hi everyone. My name is Nikki Sujadi. Uh, as you can probably tell from my surname, uh, I'm Indonesian. Uh, I was actually raised in Singapore when I was 10 years old, uh, but then I moved to Australia um, for my university degree. That's actually how I met Gary, who, uh, who used to be my ex-colleague, uh, but now I'm back in Singapore uh, working at Grab. Um, so yeah, that's actually my sort of run-through of my life. <laughs> uh, my hobby so far uh, has been to play badminton. So that is an, a national sport in Indonesia. I, I treat it like uh, my ritual. So I, I play almost every Sunday uh, with Gary when I was in uh, Australia. That's pretty much how I got really close to him as well. Um, and then, yeah, right now, back in Singapore, uh, working more as a project manager in, in Grab to actually help uh, improve the businesses and the processes within the Grab line itself. But yeah, that's really a short introduction of myself. <laughs> Well, thank you, Nikki. So just a quick question, man. How many languages can you speak? Mm, I would say I can speak three. Um, my first <laughs> main language is English, followed by either Bahasa Indonesia or Chinese, because I'm Indonesian Chinese. Mm. But I would say that the, my second language, which is like in, uh, Indonesian or Chinese, is it's 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 more conversational. I'm still trying to work uh, myself uh, to make it more professional and you know uh, improve my vocabulary on that. But yeah, my main is still English so far. I see. So is English is like your mother tongue, right? I, mm, actually, English used to be yeah. Actually, English was my mother tongue because um, when I was born, my native language was Bahasa. Uh, so English was my second language, but then when I moved to Singapore, of course, things turned for, for a difference and uh, I speak English more and now my English is, I would say, my native language. <laughs> I see. I see. Well, that's a good thing because you can speak English very fluently and many people can, get, can reach to you and we can hear a lot of stories from you. I think that's oh, thank a, you. an amazing thing. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Right, so I'm quite curious. So because you are one of the most, the person with the most diverse background I've ever met, Vicky. <laughs> you're from Indonesia, but yeah. you're like Chinese Indonesian, but then you work, you had working experiences in Australia mm. and now you're in Singapore. Mm. And I, I mean, that is just spectacular, man. I wish <laughs> I had been to that many countries just like you. So what do you think? You have experiences in three countries already, mm. living there, working there. So... How do you feel? How would you compare the life in the three countries overall? Wow, uh, that's a very good question. I would say there is a lot of uh, yeah, pros and cons. Like it, it is, uh, I would say I am fortunate enough to get exposure to three different cult, uh, countries uh, with different cultures as well. Um, but I would say that because I grew up in Singapore, a lot of my background or my culture and way of thinking is very uh, Singapore. Uh, Singaporean like and then now infused with a bit of a Australian culture because I was in Australia for a good I would say five to six years so it is infused with a bit of a western culture in it where it gives me uh, it, it, it is a unique feel but then also at the same time uh, you do have a bit of an identity crisis like what are you right uh, when I go back to Indonesia for example I don't really know how to speak the language that fluently. So it, it is also uh, hard to actually even converse, to even order food and all that, because if you order in English, but you're also Indonesian, it seems a bit odd, <laughs> right? And then uh, when I'm in Singapore, um, also at the same time, I, I have to switch to make it more Singlish so that I can sort of plan in with my colleague. Um, and also despite having that Australian background, uh, that also plays a part. Um, but I would say that there's a lot of pros as well. You know, I mean, these, these three different cultures also able to shape me in terms of um, how do I look at things differently and come and, and, and solve things from a different way. So I, I would say that, that that is the huge pros in that. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I see. I mean, man, like you have 
exposure to the three different cultures and mm. I believe your personalities and your beliefs are formed through your life experiences. So yeah, what would be your life motto, like a belief that you always follow in your life after mm. experiencing all of those cultures, religions, and I mean, so many things in the three countries? Wow, life motto for that. Um, I would say that the current life motto that I have at the moment um, not sure whether it's in particular uh, into the cultural aspect that I have, but it is a life motto that I have been uh, pretty much uh, focusing on. It's the serenity prayer. Have you heard of the serenity prayer before? I'm not sure. Can you explain it briefly for our participants? Yep, yep. So the serenity prayer uh, actually says, uh, God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And what it means is that we should focus just on the things that we can change, right? And for those that we can't change, we should just find the peace in, in us because we, we already have done all the things that we, have, we, we can do. So there's nothing much we can do. We should just find that peace. Uh, and then I think the, to maybe connect that to the culture that I have, that is also similar to you know, how I look at my struggles when I, for example, go back to Indonesia. You know, I, I really felt like I was struggling in terms of understanding the culture there, going back. Um, but then I find a serenity. Like, you know, these is things that I, you know, there are some things that I cannot change, right? This is who I am. But there are things that I still can change, which is um, you know, improving how I, uh, improving my bahasa. Maybe I can speak more bahasa. Maybe I can you know, let them know that, you know what, I, I'm, I'm not raised in Indonesia, but you know, uh, I'm, I'm still trying to learn you know, to give them a bit of disclaimer. So I would, I'll say that's my life motto in that sense. Wow, really, I mean, really meaningful. Thank you, Nikki, for sharing such a really thoughtful notion like that. And I think we can all learn a little bit from Nikki's life model, life belief. Like when we learn to accept things, well, life will get easier, less pressure, mm. and you can focus more energy on the things that are important to you. Exactly. So thank you, Nikki. Yeah, that's a really amazing oh, saying you. from a person with such a diverse <laughs> background. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So um, everyone, I think that is quite enough for the introduction. So if you guys have any questions, you can start asking right now. You can ask on the Facebook live stream or you can ask right here. You can raise your hand to unmute or you can ask in the chat box, okay? I'm just checking right now to see if there's any question. <clears throat> right, so we have a question from Tao in the chat box. Um, previously, you shared about the time when you got to find who you are. So how could you overcome that? Wow. Interesting one. Wow, that's a very good question, Tao. How do I overcome to find myself? Mm. Mm. Wow. I think, yeah, that, that, that is a really good question. Um, I honestly not sure whether that's something that, um, you know, when, when I felt lost, I would say that when I felt lost in that identity crisis, in that sense, um, how I actually find peace in doing that is to really um, <coughs> see a different perspective in that. Because I find that, <clears throat> for example, the one that I shared, um, me doesn't feel like Indonesian, even though I am Indonesian, then that, that, that gave me a, a bit of a sense of an identity crisis. But that is an, that's coming from a negative perspective where you know, you're looking uh, negatively from that. But then if I were to able to uh, look into more of a positive angle, then I'll be able to think in a way that, you know what, um, it is good to be unique where, you know, you, you are an Asian where, but then you, you're also diverse in other cultures as well. And you're able to uh, speak different languages in that sense. Um, and actually, now that I think about that, 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 that is something that I was actually um, trying to overcome when, when I was actually making a certain type of contents, or you know, I was actually making videos content uh, for YouTube and all that, 
um, I was actually looking in terms of how can I make this more personal, right? And make it more local. And I was like, uh, I, I was thinking to myself, oh, wh why can't I speak the language, which is Bahasa? Because I was trying to target an Indonesian crowd, right? And I was, I really focused so much on the negative of what I'm lacking. But then I realized that, you know, what I was lacking, uh, in fact, gave in to a lot of things that I was actually um, good at as well, which is, you know, maybe I can, with, with the English language that I have, maybe I can target to a larger audience. You know, I don't have to target to just this particular Indonesian uh, network. And so I guess that uh, instead of having to focus on just that negative aspect and being able to shift your perspective to a more positive side that, you know, instead of, yeah, just focusing on what you're lacking, but focusing on what you have, uh, that is something that made me overcome uh, this particular issue. I'm not sure whether I'm answering the question right, but that was a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank, 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 thanks both of you, Thao and Nikki, for your amazing questions and answers. I believe what I learned from Nikki's answer is that we, I mean, everyone have identity crisis, even if you're mm. from just one culture or different cultures. But the point is to look at what we actually have, not what we're lacking of. And we see, we try to see how can we utilize what we are, have in possession. Yeah. I think that is an amazing lesson from Nikki, how he turned mm. his um, identity crisis into a chance and opportunity on YouTube videos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thanks for thanks for summarizing that that was a good summary <clears throat> right nikki if you want to share your youtube channel you can send in the chat box as well <laughs> we'll all follow you we'll all subscribe and you'll get famous in no time oh my god <laughs> well okay i'll do a shameful plug uh, <laughs> i have a youtube channel uh, it is just my name nikki sujadi uh, i talk about finance and career related topics uh that's because you know i feel that a lot of times in our age, in our millennial age, we have this, uh, these questions, uh, adulting questions about finances, personal finance, how do you invest, what do you do with your money, how much do you save, um, and career, right? I mean, as much as we wish that we are already uh, in, in the best career or we pick the right job, but a lot of times we are still lost. Our first career will, will most likely not be our last career. So how, how do you actually... You know, pursue your career, where should you head, what, what you should look for. Uh, those are the things that I touch on in my channel and also in my podcast, which is called Quarter Life Hack. So if you guys like to check it out, you can uh, check that out in YouTube for the videos and Spotify or Apple Podcasts for the podcast itself. All right. Thank, thanks, Nikki, because many of our participants are youngsters, so I think they're really interested in the topic of finances and how to make... <laughs> To, you know, to manage your own personal finance. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks, Nikki. Right, we have some other um, questions about Singapore and your experiences in Singapore. So okay. Nikki, can you, um, can you share with us, can you um, describe how you would you spend a day in your life in Singapore? Mm. Uh, weekdays or weekends, like we work? Or... Let's, let's separate it, one <laughs> on answer for weekdays and one answer for weekends. Okay, so weekdays. Let's just say what's my life going to be like tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank God, because my because in Grab, it is, a, it, it is a startup. So, okay, maybe I'll just explain also what Grab is for those that do not know what Grab. Uh, Grab, it's like Uber, uh, where we actually, you know, sell services for transport, uh, food delivery, uh, and now we're also going to payment. Um, and it is, it is a very startup vibe. Right, uh, it is it is a tech startup, so we have a very tech startup vibe, and we we start work at ten. So thank God I don't have to wake up very early. Um, but <laughs> I've been trying to address that. So I usually try to start my morning by going to going to the gym or working out, probably at around eight to nine a.m. Um, and then yep, grabbing my coffee, uh, and then I'll start work at ten. I'll start work at ten, depending on also the how the meeting is. And then usually you have a very flexible time as well where you can get lunch probably around 12 or 1, according to your calendar, of course. Um, and then you end work at around 7-ish. And I think that is a good... Uh, I think that that usually is also an on and off because now you're working from home as well. Like right now I'm working from home. Uh, or, or every Wednesday I go to, out to the office. Um, but usually at home, you do have a lot of free time where 
we, when we, when you already did your work and you don't have meetings, you can also probably go for another workout or you can probably go read your books. Um, and then usually by the time it's around seven o'clock, you, I just have dinner with my family and then, uh, post I would say around this time uh, at, at night, I try to work on my videos and my scripts uh, and all that, and also have some time to Netflix. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Right. How about, how about the weekends? <clears throat> I mean, uh, like, weekends. what are special things that you would do for a weekend in Singapore? Uh, weekends, I would say I, I spend more time with my friend. Um, exploring, okay, I'm, I'm a big fan of food, right? So I, I, and I like cheap and good food. And the, and the good thing about Singapore is that there is food courts and, you know, food courts are a very affordable price, at like $5 per meal. And there are always hidden gems everywhere in Singapore. So I tried to use that chance to actually explore different side of Singapore to actually uh, get, get, get the taste. Uh, because a lot of times what I realized is that I've just been in my own bubble where I keep going to the same food and I've not been exploring, you know, more things. So I really want to do that. And so I usually use the weekend to do that with my friends. Um, so, yeah. I see. I see. Thanks, Nikki. Right. So uh, since we're talking about the cuisine of Singapore, what would be some famous dishes of Singapore that, you know, everyone who come to Singapore should try, try at, least, at least once? <laughs> um like 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 singapore dish right yeah i would say that in a singapore dish uh one thing and one of my favorite is the chicken rice uh so there is one particular chicken rice that i love it's called the tian tian uh chicken rice it's very famous in chinatown um then the reason why it's so famous is because it had a michelin guide uh award for it so if you if you come you should try <laughs> that out for sure <laughs> But there's really a lot of like uh, different type of dishes. Like chicken rice is more Chinese, right? There's Malay. Nasi lemak is Malay food. Uh, I love that as well. Um, so it, it, they use like pandan rice for it. Uh, and then fried chicken with uh, a bit of peanuts and chilies. So that is one thing. Uh, what else? And if, you, if you're going a bit more fancy and seafood, you got to try the chili crab. I mean, it, it lives to the hype. <laughs> but you got to get the right one. You can one. share any photos if you have. Oh. About the oh, Tian Tian chicken. I'm quite curious. How, how does it look chicken like? Chicken, is it? Yeah, yeah. You can I'm share sure. your screen, yeah. I think. Okay, let me give you a try. Yeah. And find, I'll, I'll try to Google, right? This is probably not my uh, photos, but I can definitely give it. I mean, just look at the way you, you describe it. I mean, <laughs> my mouth is already watering right now. Oh, is it? Yeah. All right, I'll try to share my screen uh, for those that I can also show how it looks like, like how hawker sort of looks like. Can you guys share my screen? You guys see my screen, right? See how this Tian Tian chicken rice, right? It got so popular, it has even two stalls on it. And you see how crowded it is all the time. Um, so these are in Singapore this is in Singapore and see this wow. hawker center looks like where pretty much they have stalls like this and then uh, people will just queue up and order the food of course this is a bit more popular where they have two stalls just for the chicken rice but most likely they usually just have one store for their own store uh, but wow you look at the chicken rice and it's, and it's really amazing just look how watery it is I should, I should just make a uh, food blog, right? Maybe a tasty food pixel should be in uh, Singapore as well. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Very glad. Uh, and then this is, and then, okay, I'll, I'll probably also share what is the chili crab that I like. This is the jumbo chili crab, which is fantastic. Um, wow. Look at that, okay. And okay, whenever you order chili crab in Singapore, you have to order the mantau. All right, this is the what, what? You, the mantau. This is the, oh. the one at the back. You can see uh, the oh yeah, here it is. See this? It's like a what is it? Thing. Is it like dumplings? Uh, so it's like what it is. Uh, actually, I don't know what it is. A man, mantou is like a I don't know, I, I wouldn't call it a bread, but it's like a fried 
sort of bread. It's a fried bun. Fried bun, it is, yes. Oh, Ellen, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. It's a fried bun uh, with a... And then, and then what it does is that it, it, you can actually scoop the, the taste so much or the sauce of the chili crab. Uh, and, and it just adds an amazing flavor to it. So, wow. I, yeah, you just have to do it. I'm, I'm pretty sure, Ellen, are you, <laughs> are you missing out a lot of this food? Uh, back oh, in yes. <laughs> are you from Singapore, actually, Ellen? I'm from Singapore. Oh, nice. And you, and you just recently moved or have you, have you moved to uh, Cambridge for a while? Uh, I live here many years now. Ah. I wow. see. Do you, do you have yes. any food that you miss then in, in Singapore? Yes, chi- chili crab. Chili crab. <laughs> and of course, the satay. Oh, the satay. Yes. The satay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The satay is good. Is this the chili crab place as well that you go to, the Jumbo ones? Or is there any... No, I think there's one in Jurong. I think there's one in Jurong. It's quite good as well. Jurong. Wow, long, long time ago. Okay. All right. Jurong chili crab. <laughs> All right. I'll check that out. My food All adventure right. starts. <laughs> I, I, I think both of the dishes, the jumbo chili crab and the jurong chili crab, both look amazing. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I'm going to show the satay Singapore as well. Then, satay yeah, chickens. Definitely try. This is, so yes, this is a big travel some... tip for everybody who are trying to go to Singapore after the COVID. <laughs> there is the satay. <laughs> yeah, the satay is amazing. My God. Yeah, if you guys come to Singapore, please do... Uh, Hit me up as well. I can definitely show you around the food with pleasure. Uh, yeah. I definitely like to explore about food as well. Right. Thanks, Nikki, for all the sharings on the food and the cuisine yes. of Singapore. We have mm-hmm. another question from the audience. So um, how would yep. you compare your life in Singapore and to life in Australia? And another question mm. is compare life in Singapore to life in Indonesia. So Ooh, yeah, the, okay. your life in three countries. Wow. <laughs> Let me try to break it down and uh, compare it with Australia first because it's the most recent. I'll say one of the drastic difference. Um, okay, maybe let's... Let, okay, the drastic difference would be, firstly, the weather. I mean, Singapore is... It's bloody hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's bloody hot, all right? It's humid. Uh, it's, well, we're in a tropical country, so... Uh, yeah, I, I guess that's one thing that I totally miss about Australia, which is that, you know, the weather is so nice, uh, less humid, of course. And also, I think the lifestyle, the lifestyle is really, uh, really different. Um, I think back in Australia, I really can feel that it, it, is a, it has a very chill lifestyle um, where, you know, we, 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 we can end work at 5, 5.30, and then we can go for drinks. Uh, you, or you can he- head out for dinner and then play badminton at night. And that's how that used to be my lifestyle. Like five days a week, I would just have badminton every single night. Um, <laughs> and But then here in Singapore, it's, 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 it's a bit tougher because first, first of all, I, I end work at seven. And now work is also a bit, it, it's slightly less chill. Although I would say that the startup culture is also considerably uh, not bad. So I wouldn't complain on that. Uh, but then that's where the weather plays a huge part because when I play badminton in Singapore, you sweat after like the first game. You sweat like you're really sweating cats and dogs. <laughs> Whereas in Australia, it's really different. Um, so yeah, lifestyle in that sense. Um, I definitely like the beach in Australia. I mean, that is something that uh, you guys should, should definitely explore when you guys uh, go to Australia as well. Um I don't know. Yeah, like like the lifestyle there has a bit more um, has an active lifestyle where you can go to the beach, you can you know walk by the beach uh, and even uh, run run by the coast as well, uh, or coastal walks. Uh, I like to use to do that. Um, so I would say that is different from Singapore because Singapore doesn't have a lot of beaches, uh, doesn't have that uh, nice weather that you can just stay outdoors for a very long time. Um, so yeah, that's definitely two things that I, I would say it's pretty different. I see. So mm. I, I saw that you're, you kind of enjoy the life in Australia in terms of environment and weather because you have yeah. a lot of 
time and you know the weather condition to play a lot of things, sports and outdoor activities. So yeah. what do you enjoy doing in Singapore? Mm. Food. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I gotta say since I've moved back to Singapore, I have uh, I have gained quite a bit. I'm not sure whether Gary can tell. <laughs> I used to be much skinnier back in Australia, but yeah, actually, when I go back to Singapore, um, oh, I think okay. One thing about Singapore as well is that um, it because it is it is a very safe and clean city, right? So you do you can you can actually go out and uh, explore a lot of things outside. Like, like I try to make I, I like to uh, go to the walk. Uh, to the botanical gardens, uh, which is close by, um, and then there's usually around the, the walk around like Marina Bay Sands. That is really breeze, so it, it is actually nice to 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 do walks around there. And you can see a lot of uh, people actually cycling around there. Cycling is becoming super popular in Singapore, um, as 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 part of an activity. So I would say that um, I'm trying to go into that as well, just so that I can. Have a balance between food and exercise, <laughs> and not keep gaining weights all the time. <laughs> <clears throat> right. We we just got another question from Tu in the chat box. So mm. she asks, "Do you recommend Singapore as one of the countries that people want to work internationally should try?" She is asking mm. about the working environment, the working right. culture in in Singapore. Yeah. So, how how's your experiences? And yeah. What would you answer? Mm. So, actually. Yeah, an answer to that would be yes. Um, to work in Singapore because Singapore is actually, uh, I would say, a financial hub for Asia, for Southeast Asia. A lot of the major companies are headquartered in Singapore, and you're really getting a lot of exposure in Singapore in terms of um, different cultures as well. Uh, so as much as we are, majority of us are are Chinese, we we really adopt a, a good racial harmony. Uh, culture with you know uh, other races as well. You can see a lot of people from different countries, and it is really diverse. I mean, just to you, even just putting my team as an example, um, most of my team are actually Vietnamese. So I have my my manager. Two of my managers are actually uh, Vietnamese. <clears throat> uh, my I do the developer that I was working with is actually all, all based in Vietnam, and then we have. <laughs> I know, so I have I have been actually keeping in touch with a, a lot of enemies, um, <clears throat> and also the teammates that I'm with are actually a few of them are Indonesian, uh, some of them are Malaysian, uh, some of them are you know really from all over the place, India as well. So you can see that there are so many people that you can meet in Singapore, so that you can really grab an understanding of the, uh, you know the people the different backgrounds, and also because of that. Uh, because of how, how much of a financial hub Singapore is, you really can uh, you're really able to grow yourself into a really good position if you are actually starting out in Singapore. Uh, so I would definitely say it's a it's a huge yes if you if, if you if you actually want to work in Singapore. Wow, thanks Nikki for sharing your experiences in <laughs> working in Singapore. I hope that answered your question too. All right, um, we have. Another question as well. So, um, this from Tao, and she asked, "Singapore, as she knows, is a pretty small country. Mm. So, have you ever got bored with it? And <laughs> yeah. yeah, is there any other way you know, mm. that you about the, this country that you got to experience in Singapore? That yes, exciting about the life in Singapore. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta say, oh." Uh, as a Singapore, I mean, I mean, I think a lot of people that's actually in Singapore and has been stuck in Singapore, they will always complain that yeah, Singapore is so small. There's nothing that you can do in Singapore, which, which is, which is in itself a joke itself uh, as well because it is, it is very small. You can go from one end to one end uh, in like two hours by an MRT line, like from one end of Singapore to another end of Singapore. Uh, Are you serious? I'm serious. I'm serious. You can actually go from uh. one end. Uh, from the west to the east in two hours, <laughs> like straight. Yeah, because there's wow. a, there is a straight MRT line for that, uh, which is a train. MRT is a train. So, um, I would say yes, but at the same time, I think a lot of us are stuck in our own bubble. Uh, 
where we just keep going to the same places and all the same places. So we keep thinking that there's nothing there. But when we are when when we realize that actually there's a lot of things that we haven't explored, that's when we realize, you know what, we have been wrong all this while. Because I've I've lived in Singapore for nine years and I thought I know a lot about Singapore until when I have to go to the other side, like the north side. And I'm, I, I went to like another food place and it was like, wait, I've never seen this side of Singapore. And then the more you know, the more you realize you, how much you didn't know. So uh, right now I'm more in that stage where, okay, it is a small country, but I feel that there is really a lot of things to explore and I haven't done all of that yet. Mm. So what were the new things that amazed you about Singapore? Mm. Oh, one thing that has amazes me is that um for example the one that i have been exploring as well is about bars is bars i've been exploring a few different bars uh in the nightlife so i never knew that actually um singapore has that hidden bars uh plenty around the area like i've lived within the same uh like for example chinatown um and i've walked past really hundreds of times but I didn't know that there is like this small hidden location of bars around, right? And then when, when I was trying to explore activities as well, there's actually a lot of small activities like obstacle courses that you can actually attend to that uh, I, I was surprised myself. I haven't really explored. So <laughs> those, 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 those two are one thing that I, I'm still trying to explore as well. I see. So that's another traveling tips for audiences. Mm. So instead of just going for the famous places, the yep. hidden gems in Singapore are the they must see, right? Yes, 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 yes. The hidden gems, right? You're going to ask the local for that sometimes because the hidden gems are, they do not want to popularize the hidden gems. Mm. Well, it's it, hidden. <laughs> because it's hidden, yeah. So they want to let, they don't want to, yeah, they don't want to commercialize it too much. And so you have to really ask the locals and then they'll bring you there. Right. So yeah, guys, next time if you're traveling to Singapore, you can ask Nikki. He can yes. you know, show you some of the gems that he found. Yeah, reach out to me. <laughs> right, definitely. Okay, uh, I think the, the, the participants have been really active today. That's amazing. And we just have another question. So Nikki, you, you have been living in different countries and experienced various cultures. And you might have some culture shock experiences. So mm. which situation that you find most difficult and how did you overcome it? <clears throat> is this um, currently or is this the one that, for example, when I was in Australia? Mm. Well, it depends on, on you. Like, what was the most memorable one for you? Mm. Okay. I think in terms of culture shock would be when I moved from Singapore to Australia because I think... Uh, moving from Indonesia to Singapore is quite similar in the sense where, you know, we are still in the Southeast Asian country, uh, but then moving, I think, to Australia, which is more Western country, uh, there was quite a huge culture shock. Uh, first of all, everything closes at, at five. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, if you, if you guys know about uh, Australia, a lot of the shops really close at five, and that's quite a culture shock because... Uh, shops close at 10 in Singapore. So that is like five hours difference, right? We used to, okay, for example, after dinner, you can still shop, but that's not the case in Australia. Uh, so that is a huge culture shock. And then also just how chill it is. I mean, um, in Singapore, when I was doing my O-levels, I used to actually study a lot. My, my life was really around studying, going to school, going back home, doing tutoring, you know, very, I don't know, you could, you could stereotype it as like very Asian brought up sort of <laughs> keep studying. Uh, and then moving to Australia, I mean, first of all, you had the independence, but then um, with the independence also, the I think the lifestyle is also very chill. So uh, I, yeah, after, after school, I, you know, I don't have to go back and, you know, have to quickly finish my homework sort of thing, I, I can go and grab a beer with my mates. You know, I can, um, you know, maybe explore a few areas, you know, party for a bit sometimes. And then, yeah, and then, yeah. And then you can uh, maybe do your homework next time. <laughs> but uh, I think that, that those are the 
two culture shocks that I would say, like the chill lifestyle and the the workplace. I mean the the time. Yeah, I think it's definitely definitely from the the living culture of the two countries. There's so many mm-hmm. differences, and of course it it you know it affects each aspect of the life, like how you experience shopping and different things. Yeah. So yeah. Nikki, I I have a question for you. I'm quite curious. So when we talk about culture, usually we talk about the people and their characteristics, right? Mm. So what do you think about the the people of Singapore? What are the things you love about them, and what are the things you you don't really love about them? Okay, if there's any Good question, yep. My favorite um, part okay. to listen to. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> joking. Um, I would say okay. One thing about Singapore, and I would say also in contrast to Australia as well. When I come back, is that um, Singapore tend to be more closed in a way that. Um, for example, in Australia, you can pretty much talk to strangers and just say, "Hey, hey, how are you?" That's usually how a conversation starts. Hey, how are you? You know, they start with your name. You, you introduce yourself. That's not a common practice in Singapore. You you don't really say hi to strangers that much. When you order, you get straight to the point. You order what you want, and then the person will tell you how much. You give the money. That's it. Plain and simple. You don't you don't get Much of a small talks like, "Hey, how are you? How's the day? How's how's the weather like? How's your weekend?" Uh, it's 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 pretty much mostly straight to the point. Uh, so I would say that in terms of that, uh, that is the huge difference. Uh, but at the same time, when you get to know the you know, for example, Singaporeans more, uh, they will start to open up. They will start to open up uh, themselves uh, much more. And so I think to get there to the stage where you know you're open and you can talk freely and all that, uh, it does take a bit of barrier, and you need you need to overcome that first, and then you can talk, and then, and and then you'll be yeah you'll be more like mates. I see. So like, what are the usual topics that Singaporeans usually talk about? What's the common topics? Is it? Yeah. At the moment, uh, hmm. Common topics. I would say. Uh, apart from complaining about like weather and like <laughs> common, like oh my god, so hot, <laughs> <laughs> or like usually there'll be like a certain news that's hyping in Singapore, and then you just yeah, and then and then you just share your opinion about that. Uh, what else? Mm, we do we we do talk about uh, we don't talk about politics that much as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's, it's it's a bit like uh because in Singapore we have always just have one controlling government which is yeah we, which has done pretty well it is still a democratic country country but we have not changed the party of the government since our independence so we don't really talk a lot about politics uh, and oh Singapore loves to complain you will see <laughs> Singapore loves to complain about a lot of things weather included. Uh, and they like to queue up on things. So they like to queue up on uh, food, and 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 they would and they, they wouldn't mind to queue up for like an hour for like a really good food, or or like hyped hyped food, you know, like bubble tea opening up in town or something. Wow. So for you to know a rule of thumb, if you want to know which one is good, you just see which one has the longest queue. The Singaporean <laughs> love to queue. So. <laughs> oh, that is that is good to know. Yeah, <laughs> you'll see. Like, okay, that's a good food. I'll queue for that. Then you have a <laughs> for queuing up. <laughs> I see. I see. <laughs> yeah, I think that's another another traveling tips for the audiences. Yeah, mm. we learn a lot about traveling to Singapore today. Yeah. Right. So since we're talking about the conversations with Singaporeans, so um, what I learned is is that in Singapore, people don't really talk about politics, and they like to complain. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what are the do and don'ts in conversation with Singaporeans? People? Mm. Okay. I would say that okay. Uh, the do's and don'ts. Uh, the don't I would say don't get too personal real quick because, as I said, Singaporean. It's. Um, I mean, I'll, again, I don't want to over uh, stereotype a Singaporean as a whole, because I do know that not everyone is like that, right? I mean, a 
a lot of people are already mostly open, uh, so they are fine. But I think a general rule of thumb is that you know you don't ask personal questions uh, too early on in your in your conversation. They can get quite taken aback. They can feel uh, skeptical in terms of what are the motive of why you ask that kind of questions. And I think sometimes they can, uh, yeah, sometimes they can overthink and they can be very skeptical on that. So I would say, yeah, that's the don'ts. Uh, and, and, and again, for in terms of what kind of sensitive questions that can be, for example, like, Hey, are you are you attached? <laughs> uh, or hey, um, you know what, what? What's your? I don't know. What, what is a sensitive topic? Maybe your sexual orientation, things like that. You know, those those are the things that still, I would say, a bit more of a taboo topic to touch on. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the do's, um, do uh, if you want to get to know more of a Singaporean do. Do try to know the Singlish. I think uh, one of the things about Singapore and uniquely about Singapore is the Singlish language itself. So uh, things to break the ice with is like, hey, can you teach me about Singapore, uh, Singapore Singlish? Or you try some Singlish and then the person will react like, oh my God, this guy is trying so hard. <laughs> right, Nikki, can you teach us some of the Singlish? Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, let me try. Well, I think you can pick a bit of accent. Like I have a bit of English. I I have a English accent, especially when I talk to my colleague. Uh, so things like la, uh, don't like that la. Hey, what you want to eat? Hey, what? Hey, what you want to eat? Ah, uh? you know, like I have a bit of. A, <laughs> so you you add the la in in the yeah. end of the sentence. Not all the time. Not all the time. See, this when a lot of people like to put the la in the end in the uh often, um. La la is good as an expression, but uh, at an appropriate time you can put okay. a la. So it's like, uh, hey, yeah, uh, I'm I'm uh, or, or even la la is one right. You can say, hey, I'm feeling tired le. No, you can put le low, uh, things like that. Wow. It's 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 hard to understand what it means because you really have to see the context. So uh, there is a Singlish dictionary. If you really want to find out in terms of how to use it properly, it's that. But what that means is that, okay, the, if, if you're no good at English, then Singlish is perfect for you because the worse you are at Singlish, I mean, the worse you are at English, the better, the better you are at Singlish <laughs> because Singlish literally tries to shorten the sentence, a proper sentence, mm. uh, to a much shorter, uh, which which means that you actually are breaking all the grammatical laws mm. uh, so that you can actually get your point across faster. Oh, simplified so saying, version of English. Yeah, it is a much shorter version of English. Instead of saying politely, hey, uh, uh, what would you like to eat? Say, uh, eat what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you want to eat? Uh, what you want to eat? Uh? Uh, what you want to um. eat? Uh? <laughs> Say, what do you want to eat? You, you, you just cut off all the... Uh, unnecessary words and just say just straight to the point what you want to eat <laughs> wow wow so, <laughs> wow singlish singlish well, I, I gotta look up on that you have to doing. definitely learn singlish when you're in singapore at least one or two so i think that maybe that's do's where you can learn a bit of the uh, singlish culture and yeah uh, try it out when you're well, that's a promising youtube topic for you as well nikki <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like how how to you know master Singlish in one day. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> wow. That would be interesting. I would watch that, that personally. You watch that there. Yeah. Master class is Singlish master class. <laughs> Harry, you should do that. All right. <laughs> okay. So um Great. uh if there's our participants and audiences on live stream, if you guys have any other questions, then I think we have a few more minutes for adding questions here. Yeah, so just ask if you want to. You can raise your hand. Any hands here? Not yet? Feel free to unmute, guys. Um, Nikki is a wealth of experience and knowledge, as you can hear and, and see um, from, from this, this face of wisdom. Um, Nikki's also been a paramedic in Singapore, and he is also an entrepreneur who founded his own podcast together with his brother, uh, Nicholas Sujadi. So 
if you're interested in entrepreneurship, uh, working in the military in Singapore, definitely uh, shoot over your questions now when you have the chance. All right, let's just give them a minute. Maybe they're typing the last questions. So uh, a bit of context as well on that is that uh, Singapore, every Singaporean and Singapore PR has to serve national service by uh, the age of 18. I mean, when they turn the age of 18 or when before they actually went to university. Uh, so that is, that is part of the law. And, um, and that's why I have to serve the national service. Um, and it is two years mandatory for all, all men, oh. pretty much. Yeah. So it's, it's mandatory, which means you, there's no way that you can get away with it. You no way. Do. Unless you are firstly medically unfit. Oh. Uh, and even medically unfit has a certain criteria on it, which means oh. that, for example, if you're medically unfit, but you still can walk, you still will <laughs> serve. It's just that you wouldn't be doing the running. So... Oh, wow. said, the two years is very strict um, and only a handful can get exemption for medical reasons. And there's no way getting out of it if you are Singaporean. If you are Singapore PR like me and you want to get out, it means you sacrifice your PR. So you just, yeah, you just don't become a PR. So even the famous people still have to join. Oh, yes. The service. Famous people, um, ministerial son, president son, um, wow. anywhere, <laughs> anywhere in the planet, if you're a Singaporean passport, you have to serve the national service. Wow. Yeah, there's no getting pretty out much the same to Korea. Like I have many Korean friends and they always have to go back to the country to serve yeah. the service. Yeah. I don't know about Singapore military service. It's, <laughs> it's, so it's the same in Vietnam too, isn't it? Vietnam has a... Well, they say it's mandatory, but um, <laughs> because I'm studying abroad, right? So I cannot go back to Vietnam and do the service. Uh... So I just got exemption. Okay, and you can you get exemption for life, so you don't have to go back even after you are in Vietnam. No, I, I don't have to, oh. not really. <laughs> but it, it's less strict in, in, in Vietnam. Wow, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure about other countries, though. Because you know, I was actually overseas when I, I was already in Australia when they called me back. Oh, and then I was already I was doing my first year in university, and then they called me back, and then they told me that, um, yep, you have to serve in the national service, which I know was coming. But then I try to defer because I was already in university, right? And they don't allow it because uh, you have to, because the law is that what by the, by the age of 18, you mm. have to actually serve the national service. And the only deferment that you can do is if, ex, for example, you are doing high school, you're still, you know, pre-university education. But I was already in university and so that wasn't a valid reason. So I have to go back. I had deferred my university, went back, did my national service before continuing. Wow. Yep. Well, anyway, thanks, man, for serving the national service. <laughs> yeah, as, as you were asked to, I think that's a, I, I believe it's a good thing, you know, to serve it is the a good thing. It is a good thing. It is good. It is good to mature your mind up. Well, it, and, and it's really, a, for me, I, I got to say, it was a life-changing experience, uh, in my opinion. I, I really, well, I, um, I think also because I was in, I was having the vocation of the paramedic. And as a paramedic, the, the cases that you are involved with, because, okay, so paramedic are the one that pretty much if you call uh, the emergency and medical hotline, I will be the one that is attending to the case. And a lot of the people that are actually needing of the medical attention are those that are firstly most vulnerable. Those are the elderly and those that are the one in the low social uh, economic status, Right. So you really get to see firsthand their living condition. You really get to see the firsthand, like, wow. Like, I, I, like for me, I'll, I'll go to homes and I really would, would, would not believe like, you know, like someone would be, uh, an elderly would be living alone here. Or there was cases where elderly fell and cannot ask for help and was stuck at the floor for like two days. You know, these, these things are obviously not something that you see often in the news, but you get to see it firsthand and you have to actually help them out. And I don't know, it was a very humbling experience, honestly, where you really, you know, you really can get to see from how their perspective is uh, from a different side of Singapore. I mean, 
yeah, again, I, I, I felt like I'm always in this bubble where, you know, I see all the good things. You see the news of Singapore is all the good and pretty things. But there's also the other side of Singapore where you don't really see it. And only when you go through this kind of experience, then you are able to actually really get an understanding that, you know what, the world is not as pretty and as, you know, mm. sunshine and rainbows as what we see in the... Yeah, it's not always, p- always pink. There's a bit of black somewhere as well. That's it. Yeah. Black pink. <laughs> <laughs> well, not did, did someone anyone. say black pink? Sorry. <laughs> no, because the dad mentions about that not everything is pink. You know, there are still some blacks, and I was like, "Yep, that's right." That's <laughs> <a> black pink. <laughs> but that's life, man. Black pink is life. But, if anyone yeah, in anyway. the audience, if anyone in the audience is a fan of black pink, uh, maybe we can do a watch party together for their next. <laughs> music video oh, there's my sister <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah, it is. oh yeah um I, I, will, I would actually honestly volunteer to be in the in a national service again and in fact i actually do miss it so much that um i i, I did consider of actually volunteering again as a paramedic even you know maybe as a part-time because wow. i really think it's a very humbling experience Amazing, man. That's just life-changing. Mm. Even to me, because I always have this perception about military service. It's like, you know, they take away my chances to, to grow economically, you know, to get a degree and to start working and stuff. Yeah. But I never thought it would really change someone's life for the better, just like mm. you, you have shared. So yeah. yeah, thanks, Nikki, for your sharings. Oh, no worries. Thanks. All right. I think that concludes our um, talk show of today. We have learned a lot about Singapore life with Nikki, who has a really diverse background. So we know about the food, we know about the cuisine, we know about the sports, we know about what topics to talk to and what topic not to talk to Singaporeans. Yeah, and we learned a little bit more about the military services and how life-changing it can be Mm. for a Singaporean person. So I hope that everybody learned something from Nikki today and you can take it away and maybe apply it to your life with um, Nikki's sharing. So yeah, um, Gary, do you have any last word, last sharing to conclude the event? Um, no, none from me except just um, gratitude towards Nikki. Thank you for joining us, taking your time out uh, to join us from Singapore. Um, and, and thank you, Dart, as usual. Dart, for everyone watching, is is our... TCV Masterclass host, and um, he is uh, he and our guest speakers are always responsible for creating um, really really engaging and interesting topics that I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, if you guys did like um, our show, please please visit um, first Nikki's YouTube channel, which I've put into uh, the chat somewhere. If you scroll up. <laughs> or you can go to our Facebook page and it's linked there. Uh, and you can also go on, you can also type Tasty Culture Bites into Google and uh, leave us a review. Um, uh, we, we'd really appreciate that. Could take, takes 30 seconds. Right. <laughs> Thanks Gary and Dad for having me. Honestly, it's, it's been really a huge pleasure to chat about this. <laughs> right. So yeah, once again, thanks everyone for joining today. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next masterclass next month. All right. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Nikki. And I hope you you guys can enjoy the night. Happy Easter. Bye-bye. Happy Easter. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.